Let's start the afternoon session with the first speaker, let's photo song. The title is Alman Edition of O3 and C2 Emission Line from a 16 a 9 d D1 at Redshift 7.13. Thank you very much. I first want to thank organizers uh, organizing this wonderful workshop. I'm very happy to be here. Today I want to share uh, my student's paper. So this is by Barry and in Poer, and they published uh, this paper about uh, O3 and C2 detections from A1689 at Redshift 7.1. And this is a collaboration work of all, all of these people here. Uh, and they were uh, undergrad students when they started this project, so uh, and they worked hard to publish a paper, so it's, it's a good work to share. About how the, this project started as a summer project. Okay. Uh, so in Taiwan, there's, a, there's a, this ALMA summer program uh, among uh, different universities in Taiwan. And this started as a <coughs> summer project for undergrad students. And then for this project, um, so the, because the grant is coming from ALMA, we need to do something with ALMA data. No database data, it's, it's ALMA, <laughs> only ALMA data. And so, so we searched for archive over here. Okay. Here, uh, we searched for ALMA archive and we looked for uh, unpublished ALMA data that is in archive about high rate of galaxies. And then one of them is, uh, we found this A1689, Z, B1 data. And this ALMA data was public for three or four years. So okay, I thought maybe it's okay. If it's three years uh, already in public data, maybe it's okay for us to use the data. So we started analyzing this data. Abel 16, uh, this galaxy, A1689 ZD1, it's a um, higher to galaxy and, and gravitationally magnified galaxy. It's, it looks like this. And then here, it, this is uh, ACS, and then it's in invisible, or particularly dark. But if you look at, if you go, go to NICMAS, then it's detected and the speeds are also very bright. It was first identified uh, in this Bradley et al. paper as a gravitational lens dropout galaxy with magnification of 9.3, gravitational lens magnification of 9.3. And I think this galaxy is very suitable to discuss in this workshop. The reason is here. Don't you think this galaxy, so this is a galaxy here, the Alma continuum image. Don't you think this looks like something? Any opinion? So if you compare with where we are, this exactly <laughs> look like this, right? There are double peaks corresponding to Ishigaki Island and Egyomoji Island. <laughs> so it's, it's very suitable to discuss oh. this culture. And then <coughs> later here, this Black Island place, we found a very interesting uh, emission feature here. So, so I'll explain later. <laughs> OK. Then, um, OK, but then what make made this galaxy famous, it's probably this uh, Watson et al. Nature paper, 2015. Uh, they took a, uh, this is extruder spectrum, and then you, you find the Lyman break here at about one micron, so they identified the uh, redshift uh, 7.5 plus minus 0.2. It's not super accurate because it's a drop uh, redshift from a break, uh, then they estimated the star formation rate of the exposed with PLT 16 hours. And they expected the estimated star formation rate is 12 solar per year. Stellar mass is 10 to 9, and their stellar age is about 80 million years. And then I uh, recently noticed that the X shooters detector is changing between optical and near infrared here. So the, although we have a break, but the, this is also a place where the detector is changing. So you, you can see in the, the background it's changing. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was surprising was, uh, oh, okay, I was supposed to show this. Uh, 
And what was surprising was uh, from their AMA continuum, they estimated, uh, they, in cycle zero and one, they detected the AMA continuum. Then they estimated that this dust mass to gas mass rate ratio is 17 times 10 to the minus three. This is like Milky Way's uh, dust gas ratio, the same, at ratio 7.5. So it was a very surprising move. There's already a lot of dust in this high-rated galaxy at ratio 7.5. That's how this paper made into nature. Uh, this means, you know, the dust was uh, enriched very quickly within only 500 million years since the Big Bang. Uh, then this also indicates very high metallicity. So that's, you know, of the fundamental uh, metallicity relation. So that's interesting. So that's why they made it to the nature. So that's why that made this uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Right. And then later, uh, going through the hi history, the Natsen et al. in 2017, they observed Alma band six and seven dust continuum. So that was the, this is band six and seven continuum. Uh, but they didn't detect emission lines here. The, uh, the C2 lines going to be here at ratio 7.5. But as you can see, they do detect anything. Uh, one is one of the reasons is this is not so deep observation, Alma. And the other reason is because they are looking at ratio seven point five. And then this observation, uh, we use uh, cycle three data, that's deeper, higher resolution data that was in archive. And maybe. Maybe we don't need to remind you experts here, but um, <laughs> the target is band six, targeting C2 at uh, ratio 7.5, and band eight is targeting O3 emission at 88 micro. And then maybe everybody knows, but then just a reminder, C2 is basically from uh, coming from PDR region, photo association region, including other regions. Um, then O3, is mainly coming from a two ionized region. Okay, then this is the arm observation. So it's like seven hours and three hours, and then um, what should I? Right. Um, okay. So this is observation. Okay. Then uh, we detected here. So the. Uh, we detect both of both lines. So C2 emission in band six, uh, the contour is this white one, so we detected them. Uh, right, with, with very good signal to noise ratio. And then all three, red one is all three emission. We also detected in band eight um, with very good SN either. Then, then interestingly, the redshift was not 7.5, but we detected at 7.1.3. And then, okay, first we, we are looking at the C2 here, and then C2 we have sort of, you know, double peaks, red shifted one, and then blue shifted one, corresponding to these two peaks. Mm -hmm. Make sense? And then star formation, if you estimate star formation range from C2 line using some conversion, then we got 46 solar per year. Mm -hmm. Then we also detected all three lines that also uh, the double peak, with red shifted component and blue shifted component, again at ratio 7.3, um, yeah, consistent with the C2 observation. So the red shift by Watson et al. was not so accurate because that was a uh, lemon break. So we corrected the red shift using the emission line as a stretch of 7.13, so that's one thing. Uh, then let's look at the velocity field. Velocity field look like uh, this is C2, so C2. Then uh, we found the two components, but so we have a blue shifting component here, and then red shift shifting component here, and then we also have a uh, red shifting component here. So we found uh, this, this third prime. We also observed this in all three, which is here. So that, that's consistent, blue shifting component, and red shifting component, and we have this 
third component here. Um, <clears throat> the interpretation of, so what's going on? It's, it's, uh, it's inconclusive, but then from the morphology, Watson and all and the other papers are discussing this may be a merging galaxy, which is consistent with our uh, velocity field, maybe this part and this part are mer merging, but maybe, but we also found the third component. Uh, we don't know what this is. One possibility is maybe ejected material from merger or uh, third more highly obscure region of the galaxy. We, we don't know, but uh, we, we revealed the velocity field structure was something like this. What's more interesting is also to see to emission line ratio. So this is the, the ratio line, O3 to C2 emission line ratio. Then we found the um, average ratio is something like 2.0. This is kind of high, higher, much higher than the local galaxies. And then uh, we can actually, do, thanks to the almost uh, resolution, <coughs> we can spatially uh, resolve the ratio. Then uh, ratio at the center here is almost reaching at seven. So that's that's very, very high ratio. And then decreasing towards outside. This is not the center of the merger, but here. <coughs> um, What's going on here? Maybe uh, we visited three possibilities. There may be AGM here, or the, there's a shock front from the merger of those two peaks, or maybe there's a central starburst. Um, that those are three possibilities we discussed in the paper. Uh, by the way, we match the beam size here uh, with UV tapering between O2 and C2, O3 and C2. Uh, then this Average ratio of two is already much higher than the other galaxies. So here, local galaxies are greater to zero. C2, O3 to C2 ratio is something like here, 0 0.1 or something. But then our galaxy two is here, along with other greater to seven galaxies here. So why why high ratio galaxies are this this ratio is enhanced? What's going on? Um, Here's, we, we don't have a conclusion, but then here's uh, several possibilities. Uh, first, um, maybe there's a discussion that C2 is underestimated because Alma's resolution is very high, so high angular resolution. So if C2 is very extended, that flux may be underestimated. But at least we try to UV taper into match the beam sign. Mm -hmm. Uh, this cat et al. discussed that uh, maybe CO abundance is very low because their age is uh, uh, very young. That's one possibility. And then they did the simulation of quark supernova to explain, and they, they explained this very high, they, they created a very high O3 situation. That's one uh, possibility. And the Harikane et al. paper discussed uh, Maybe ionization parameter you, you, ion is uh, very high, then because possibly due to the low metals, the young cell population, then um, that will make uh, O3, enhance the O3 emission, make the ratio higher. That's one possibility. Another possibility is uh, PDR region is covered somehow, and then making uh, C2 emission lower. That's another possibility. To illustrate these possibilities here. So this is the situation at ratio zero. Um, so H2 region is here, it's emitting O3. And then PDR region is uh, more extended and that's emitting C2. So say this is the ratio zero situation. And at higher ratio seven, uh, O3 is enhanced, right? The ratio is high, right? So one possibility is ionization parameter is large, so this H2 region is extended, more ionized, so that's why O3 is enhanced, that's one possibility. The other possibility is that PDR region is covered, so this, this part is covered, so O3 relatively compared with the cover C PDR region, O3 emission looks like enhanced, that's another possibility. 
But what's new in our work is we actually have a spatially resolved. I think it's this one of the first time we had a spatially resolved O3 C2 ratio at ratio 7. And then we found it's more enhanced at the center. So in this case, um, we can explain the, the enhancement higher ratio at the center. So maybe this may be um, better explain our particular case. Okay. Then, okay. then um, these undergrad students, by the time they, they published the paper, they became graduate students, but they managed to publish a paper among their busy class schedule, and then they published an APJ, which is very nice. They work together. And then this is the summary of my presentation that we, uh, we detected all three and C2 from registers uh, ABL 1689 with D1. And the red, we revised the redshift from 7.5 to 7.1. And then we found all three C2 ratios very high compared to local galaxies too. Then, um, especially at the center, the ratio was as high as seven. And then I think this is the first time, especially uh, resolved the all three and then C2 ratio at ratio seven. Okay, I stop here. Thank you for organizer. Thank you everyone for listening. Yes. Have you checked the uh, dust property by position by position? The uh, dust property, what, what do you Like the, the, so the, the, for example, the dust temperature <coughs> indicated by the slope of the dust? Uh, so uh, that <coughs> is already done by other people, continuum mm -hmm. analysis, so we didn't particularly do it. Uh, um, I think that's not some paper. So I I think high line ratio uh, region has high dust temperature, so maybe we can cross check. Uh, okay. Sorry, I forgot. I need to look at the paper. Oh, um, yes. yes. I, it, it can be the cross check for, right. for yeah, your that's a good point. Yes. yes. Yeah, so, so dust, dust continuum is already analyzed, mm. so we didn't particularly do the this. Yes, but the, the failure region can be uh, hot set. PDR or high, uh, high U parameter region mm -hmm. can uh, exist uh, with low dust craze. <laughs> Sorry, my <laughs> English is not good. But so, yes, oh, I, uh, <coughs> I think uh, it's nicer to combine those without dust and my emission together and give some indication about the environment. That's yes. the point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Because it says so in the counter, so there are two peaks. Right. right. That's it. Are, are they ongoing order or are they doing anything? I think it's, it looks like ongoing margin because there are, there are two, two peaks still ah, yeah. with uh, different parts. I think the moment they were met and the laboratory. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. So I have, for example, the idea is the light over. Yeah. Even the white counter they have to keep in the center. Right. So are they merger? Uh, that's what people discuss. Yes. It looks like merger. And then the uh, guess the, uh, the light ratio map is the same thing. So the height the ratio is with the in the center between the two. It's not really at the center, well, near the center, but it's it's not really at the center. It's a little bit off. Uh, you mean the high line ratio possibly indicates an uh, ADN? That's one possibility, I think, yes. Uh, but uh, if it is ADN, then the ADN does not overlap with uh, either <coughs> of the counter peaks. Yes, yes. The the emission peak is here. Yeah. Then the ratio peak is here. Yeah. So it's a little how, how to explain the offset. I don't know. Can you help me? <laughs> yeah. Some in some nearby galaxies, the researchers found that there could be some uh, agent which run away from the galaxy. Oh, so maybe this is running away from the axis. That's possible. possible. It's yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's what I think about. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. So, you yes. were saying before that uh, uh, maybe one uh, emission is more extended than the other. That's why the resolution, they don't, uh, um, <coughs> the, the, the ratio is uh, so large. And uh, so I was looking uh, if, uh, the, so if you have the possibility to have a seven meter data or other resolution of uh, the same line of uh, the observation. And they don't understand why actually this target is always observed with the array. With the why, why so? Why there, there are no seven meter or uh, total power observation of this target? What, what's, what's the reason for it? Oh, I think this is, this Alma, only Alma can reach this kind of sub hexagon resolution. No? So, so, like, if you observe it, I don't know, JCMD, the resolution is not so uh, good. Maybe that's why. Then, um, right, the beam size is a little different. Uh, so, here maybe the beam size is better for C2 um, in, in that sense. So, uh, we try to UV taper to match this. Yeah. this. Are you not uh, planning to to send a proposal to observe this target with a uh, data combination? Or I mm -hmm. I have no plan, and the students have graduated. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <laughs> problem. <laughs> could, you, could you submit a proposal? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's very curious what you showed, actually. There are observations for band 3 to band 9, so it's a really curious target. Thank you so much. Very nice. Yes, yes, please. I mean, no, this, this is like, uh, this is just a I like a lot, so thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So let's move on to the next speaker.